Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be looking at a player that has been getting a lot of praise, and I mean a lot of praise. I even uh, recently made a video on this exact game where we looked at Epileptic Kid and his performance, and I was giving him a lot of praise. He went 9 and 1, his one death was caused because of a really good smoke gank, and even in that video's comments, people were like, oh, save carried the game, he made so many saves. And, you know, he did play really well. His Shadow Demon is fantastic. He set up a lot of kills as well as, you know, made a lot of clutch saves. And so all in all, I want to look at his gameplay as well so you guys can become better support players. And I don't just want to look at this game from, you know, like a Shadow Demon perspective. I want to look at it from a Dota perspective. How do you make better decisions as a Dota player, especially a position four hero with, you know, uh, so many options. Shadow Demon is a hero with a lot of options. You can save, you can go aggressive. You know, you can use your Shadow Poison to farm, to fight to make stacks, so yeah, let's take a look at it all. And if you're excited for this video and you appreciate the content we make every day, including me, the editors, the people that make the thumbnails, the people that do the SEO, if you even know what that is, and uh, and so on. If you appreciate that and you want more of this content, smash the like button and subscribe as well as sign up to the Game Leap website because we post there every day. That's crazy, right? Click the link down below and I'll see you there. All right, let's get into the video. So the first rotation of the game, well, actually, let me give you guys some context. Save. Starting out this game was landing top, okay? He was landing with DM's Timbersaw. Now, Timbersaw is a hero that doesn't love having teammates unless they provide a specific stun or slow, you know, that allows him to stay on top of heroes. But other than that, he wants solo XP, especially if he's close to level six. On top of that, OG hard countered Timber. They have Slark, Omni Knight. Timber can't do anything. It's as simple as that. He can't. And Shadow Demon also doesn't do anything against Slark Omni Knight. And so essentially, looking at this game, well, there's some knowledge for you. Shadow Demon's E can get purged. Uh, the Q, the Whirling Death from Timber can get purged by Omni Knight. Omni Knight simply out sustains the harass of Timber. Slark builds up stacks. And so basically, it's very important that Save does not waste his time in this lane. His better options this game are as follows. Play around the Viper, because the Viper is a strong hero. Or make stacks for Phantom Assassin, or Timber, or Viper. They actually all take stacks at some point in the game. And that's exactly what he does. And that's a really good thing to determine before the game starts. This is kind of a learning point I just want to give you guys as we watch him walk around mid lane, because that's kind of what he wants to do. He just wants to make stacks and play around mid. Uh, but a, a learning point I recently made when I was talking to one of my students is that in Dota, if you try to think about things in game, nine times out of 10, you're just gonna like grief your brain. It's just too confusing, right? It's just way, way, way too confusing. And so you might be saying, well then Speed, when do I think? I really believe this guys, but you have to do most of your thinking or all of your thinking, either while you're walking back to base <laughs> or when you're dead, but most importantly, before the game starts. And so this game, I bet you, when Save loaded into this game, maybe he didn't consciously think about it because he has tens of thousands of hours in this game, so he could probably do it all subconsciously. But the point I'm making, right, the point I'm making is that he didn't have to, you know, think it through and go through his options. He just snap made the decision and that's what makes him a good player. The next thing that Save does really well that most players kind of forget to do is think about interactions or at least understand interactions. So another reason why it's really good for Shadow Demon to play mid this game is funny enough, Shadow Demon is a counter to Puck. Yes, you heard that right. Shadow Demon counters Puck. How? Why is that? You don't have a stun. You don't have Hex. How do you possibly counter Puck? Well, the reason is because if he casts Orb and you put him under, he can't jaunt to it. And that's exactly what we see here. Thompson gets a little bit greedy. Not really surprising. Thompson is naturally a dangerous player. He likes to play on the edge. Save understands this and he punishes. And because of that, they get another Toxin down. They follow it up. Thompson goes for a very risky TP and it doesn't pay off. And that's frankly a huge kill for this game. It allows them to continue to siege this mid tower, which they've been doing for a while, and most importantly, shut down Thompson, who is the top net worth hero in the game. All because Save understood an interaction, and it doesn't bother wasting his time leaning with a timber saw. Another thing, quick tip, guys, buy tomes right away. I know, I'm not gonna harp on it, I'm not gonna harp on it, I really wanna harp on it, I'm not gonna harp on it. Please buy tomes right away, please, please, please. The amount of times in this 3 key series that people don't buy the tomes at minute 10, is insane to me. It is broken. It is literally one of the most important thing you can do as a position 5 or a position 4. Especially if you're close to level 6. 
Okay, let's move on to the next point. So next up here, we're going to see the first time in the game he actually goes back to the Timbersaw lane. Now in this case, it's a smoke gank with his team. And the reason they want to make this play is for the same reason I said in the PA video. They want to create space, right? They specifically want to create space for the Phantom Assassin. They want to enable the Phantom Assassin. Now in this fight here, Shadow Demon is very good against Omni Knight because Omni Knight, you know, his Heavenly Grace doesn't work too well against your ulti. Your ulti is pretty good against him. And so all in all, his DM somehow solo kills mid one. All in all, what they want to do here is just dive. Another really really important thing to understand in Dota is the vision game. You're going to see consistently this game, he's spamming shadow poison, scouting out various areas. I do believe that his usage of shadow poison is something that most players forget to do. The next important thing to do when you're playing Shadow Demon, and yes this is Shadow Demon specific, is slow down the pace of the game when there's nothing to do. In particular here, let's look at VP's draft. Is it or is it not easy for them to make plays? I want you guys, this is like a really important idea, okay? Most players never even get to the level where they think about this. Right here, his team comp, how many disables do they have? Right, how many disables do they have? Zero. How many like DPS combos do they have? What I mean by that is like, how much synergy is there between their heroes when it comes to pickoffs, okay? I'm, I really want you guys to think about it from a pickoff perspective because typically the mid game is very much revolved around pickoffs. Not always. Not always, right? Not always, but a lot of the time it is, right? Reason being is because people still want to farm. They don't want to group up, right? Everyone wants to still push in lanes and get their items, right? Which is why in pubs, I'm always recommending split farming because frankly, pros are doing it all the time. Players who don't simply are just too anxious to fight. But this game, they can't really pick people off that well. Sure, they can try, right? If they get a Shattered Demon ulti into just Viper right clicks, that can work. But against OG's team comp, it's very hard. They're very mobile. OG's team comp is actually specifically designed to split the map. That's why they pick Puck, right? They want to split the map. They want to draw out this game. They want to stall. They have Magnus and a Puck. They're going to empower the Slark, make the Puck push in lanes, delay the game. That's always the strat. And then they're going to defend towers with like Dream Coil and, you know, Terrorize. Maybe RP as well. And so it's okay to not make plays at this point in the game because what VP needs to do is prevent OG from just out farming them, from just out splitting them, out split farming them. Not taking towers necessarily, just out farming them by split pushing. And funny enough, this is largely the meta in Dota right now, and I don't see it going away necessarily. Unless the next patch, which is I really hope coming out soon, unless this new patch is revolutionary, which I mean it might be, but unlikely that it just changes the concept of split farming. It's very common to see pro teams splitting up the map a lot. VP is going to do it too, right? They have a lot of farming heroes. And so him understanding that his team can't really go for pickoffs, they can't really push towers. What is his option? It's to farm. And that's usually your options in Dota. I'm going to go over this again. I think it's a cool thing to think about. Your options in Dota are either to farm, to take objectives, or to try to kill people, pick them off, right? He can't pick people off that easily. And he can't take objectives. They can't Roche, right, at all. And so, yeah, what does he do? He farms. Now, he does look for a little quick play here at GPK, but it doesn't work out. And they quickly go back to farming, right? It's pretty funny, you know? And this is how I want you guys to look at your, your games. Think about your three options. And make sure you understand which option is most viable for each stage of the game, because it changes, you know? It really does change. Next up, we're gonna see an expertly played fight by save. So it's a fight deep in his jungle, and what does he wanna do? He wants to play the edges. He also got a really nice Aether Lens timing here. It's not the best, but you know, for having only 22 CS, which is actually not that much on Shadow Demon, you can get a lot more if you're taking stacks and pushing waves, but for having this amount of CS, it's good. He doesn't have a lot of deaths, only two. Could be less, but you know, let's move on. So the first thing you want to do with Shadow Demon, let's say you're playing this hero, is you want to spam your E over and over and over again. If you max it out, you better be casting it every single time it comes up. If you are not casting it, the, the millisecond it comes up, you are making a massive mistake. And I just can't stress that enough. I, I watch so many players who don't spam these type of spells. It's like Zeus's who have Aether Lens and don't spam their Q in fights. It's like insanity. But nonetheless, you can see he immediately gets two stacks on the Soxa. That could, you know, turn into five later on. Who knows? Continuing to build up stacks, playing it defensive, doesn't panic ulti, right? Right away here, you'd be like, oh, he needs to purge the Omni Knight ult, ulti, 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 because that's what Shattered Demon's ulti does. It's a counter to Omni Knight ulti, right? Constantly purges, purges. You can't purge Heavenly Grace, but you can purge um, whatever this weird spell is called, Guardian Angel, right? That one. You can purge that. And so he, he doesn't panic ulti, though. He understands that Topson's not going to get bursted. No Tell is already dead, and so he holds it, which is a great decision, right? That's very hard to do. That's largely intuition, but I hope I get, you know, gave you the reasons why he does that. Next up here, doesn't panic, doesn't disrupt himself, understands that this fight is VPs to win. They're very split up on OG, right? Completely zoned out. 
Frankly, VP has much better early game team fight. They have a Viper, a Timber, a Dying. It's brutally hard for OG to fight at this point in the game. And so instead of panicking and disrupting himself, he actually disrupts the uh, the Slark. Good thing about Shadow Demon against Slark, Slark can't purge your bubble. He's stuck, right? It's actually a, another reason why Shadow Demon is great this game. It is counter to Slark if for that reason. It even counters Slark because Slark can't purge your ulti as well. But getting back into the point, Basically, he's going to kite out here, doesn't panic. It allows his team to surround the Slark. And then after that, he continues to ping, says, hey, I can catch a Slark. Slark cannot perch my ulti. Gets another stack of poison, pops his W just to play it safe, guaranteed a kill, and they win the fight. Really well done. Okay, let's get into the next major fight of the game. This one, I really want to talk about positioning and make sure you guys can learn a little bit about how to just position better and, you know, good habits to get into to prevent yourself from overextending. So the first thing I want to talk about is... What should you do every time you cast a spell? Well, the thing you want to do every time you cast a spell is actually turn around most team fights, right? Especially if you're a squishy backliner, that's what you want to do. And so let's take a look at that so you guys understand what I mean. He puts the, the timber under and you can see immediately is clicking backwards. Immediately. No hesitation. But you might be saying speed, but he has uh, three more spells to cast. Why would he do that? You need to make sure you're not the one on the front line in this case, right? It's like play playing Winter Wyvern. If you're like straight up just auto attacking the Slark here with your Q, you're probably going to get jumped by the Willow or, you know, uh, the, the Puck and potentially get bursted. And that's a huge deal for your team because you do a lot of damage. That's typically what these ranged heroes do. You do a lot of damage, you have a lot of impact, but you die easily. That's kind of how, how Dota works a lot of the time, right? That's how these heroes are built. And so you can see every time he casts a spell, he backs up a little bit just to make sure he can get out of vision, right? Shadow Poison, in this case, he moves forward, did want to ulti to Slark. That's fair backs up again once again right cast a spell backs up doesn't want to get coiled doesn't want to get jumped right gonna go for the w while well, he was looking for the w decides okay i'm not gonna w slark slark and purge it it's not really worth it decides to go for it anyway to try to you know force an ulti from the slark which actually funny enough ends up happening and uh yeah he continues to play the outside of the fight even here look at this i love this this is why i think it's such a good rule of thumb you can see pros subconsciously follow it but even though they got us uh an omni knight pick off and the slark had a really bad ulti right he got a Defensive ulti, which is typically not good for Slark. He still is continuing to back up in between every Shadow Poison, just in case the enemy team decides to jump him. Just in case. On top of this, now, because he stays far back and doesn't get clumped up, he doesn't take any damage and he doesn't get silenced, right? Really, really matters here. And because of this, he can continue to chase, he can continue to provide vision with his uh, Shadow Poison. Almost forgot the name. And continues to follow up, right? Gets another nice little save onto the Phantom Assassin, preventing Soxa from doing anything. And sure, OG is doing a great job of kiting this fight out, honestly. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. They can't kill anyone except an epileptic kid just like runs to the backline. <laughs> just just assassinates the Omni Knight. I, I remember watching this. It was so... <laughs> Poor Notel. He just bought back. He has like zero net worth. My man's like, I'm coming. <laughs> and then it's just dead. Okay, last and final clip of the video, another example of positioning. The reason why it's, I, I want to do that is because that's, you know, kind of everything for these heroes. It's, well, it's spell casting and positioning, but most people don't get to cast their spells because they're just dying too fast. So, he's sitting in the back, right? Tombstone gets dropped, they clearly want to siege. Look where he is standing, okay? Look at this. His camera is very far up. By the way, oh, this is another good lesson. I, I Look where his camera is. He's paying attention to what OG is doing. He knows where he is. He's not moving, he's not clicking. He's just standing still in the back right trees, right? He's over here. I'll, I'll go to it real quick. He's just chilling over here. Out of vision, even behind a tree. Waiting for the fight to start. He does not want to get smoke ganked by OG. A very common play when your high ground is getting uh, attacked, especially in pro games, is you smoke from mid, you go around, and you collapse, try to find the backliners. He's trying to avoid that. So yeah, he's avoiding that. Paying attention to what's going on. He wants to see how far up everyone is, what he needs to look for. Only casting Shadow Poison. Doesn't want to overextend, goes for the W to force out another bad Slark ulti, so it's a good decision here. Not panicking with the ulti yet, right? Because Slark's still at ulti, so it's not worth it yet. And he only blinks in. He only blinks in when nothing can jump him, right? There's too many zombies, all the blinks are getting cancelled, nothing can jump him. You know how many Shadow Demons blink in and just YOLO disrupt people to lead fights? It's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> but yeah, this is a much better example of what you should do. They slowly win this fight. OG is just getting completely run over by the death ball of VP. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so hard to fight into their team comp at this point in the game. Even Glimmer Caves. 
Oh, I love this so much. Even though we didn't need to do it this in this case, I just love this. It's just like theoretically so cool. Like this play he's about to make, guys, if you didn't see it, is why I love Dota. This is why I love Dota. Jenny, I will never stop playing Dota because of these type of plays. He is so afraid that Puck is going to cut the wave. He's thinking so far, even though they kind of see the Puck in the base and he doesn't really have to be afraid of it. He's just so afraid that the Puck is going to cut the wave, which is the only way this, this push gets delayed. It's the only way. So he glimmer keeps the melee creep just in case it's going to get nuked, right? To reduce the magical damage, make sure it doesn't get one shot to break the back door. Oh, I love, I just love that. <laughs> all right. And yeah, that's going to be the end of today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the supporting video for all you support players. I don't, I don't make too many support videos. Unfortunately, they get less views, so there's less of an audience. So naturally, I'm going to create... I suppose based on demand. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video and you want more support videos, well then support the video, I suppose, by clicking the like button, subscribing, and watching it again. The more watch time, the better. <laughs> In all seriousness, I hope you guys learned some good tips about supporting. Shadow Demon's personally one of my favorite heroes. It's a really good solo queue hero because it's really good at playing the farming game. This hero is incredibly good at making and taking stacks, snowballing, and it's one of the highest impact heroes in Dota. Like in team fights, Shadow Demon can solo carry fights by building up five poisons, Wing someone, and then insta killing cores. Like I have this one memory when I was playing solo queue where I got five stacks onto an OD and just exploded him. I was relatively new to Dota at the time, and like it just amazed me. I'm like, wow. This hero is incredible. I get number five and they explode. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, Shadow Poison. The more stacks you get and multiplies, it builds up and you slay people. All right, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button and subscribe if you want more VP content. That's the only team I'm going to talk about from now on. Divai. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. But yeah, that's going to be about all, folks. Remember, click the link down below and subscribe to the Game Leap website where we have thousands of videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.